Hello and welcome to BQ Prime. You're joining us on this uh, special broadcast where we're starting a new, brand new series uh, of interviews with uh, senior bankers, financial sector uh, professionals, as well as ministers. Uh, the concept here is called Bankable. Uh, and on our inaugural uh, interview, we have with us uh, Mr. Dinesh Khara, the chairman of State Bank of India. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Khara, for joining us uh, on the inaugural episode of uh, Bankable. Uh, and let me first firstly wish you a happy new year because it's just started uh, the other thing that i wanted to ask you is what is this 2023 uh, brought in what what is january uh, like for you uh, at uh, state bank of india thank you very much for having me on your show and that on the inaugural show i also also take this opportunity to wish all your viewers a very very happy healthy prosperous and successful year 2023 so when you talk about what is there in the in 2023 i would say that it's a year of hope and we are quite hopeful that uh, the kind of challenges which the economy global economy faced in the the past couple of years first on account of pandemic and secondly on account of the geopolitical dislocations disturbances perhaps economy global economy as well as indian economy will steer ahead with a lot of confidence in the year in the year 2023 well of course one is that uh, the supply chain disruptions to a greater extent have got addressed and secondly we have started seeing some kind of normalization when it comes to the global inflation and we have seen in the last year or so that the global inflation is something which has led to the higher policy rates by the central bank and now it seems to be moderating. So hopefully going forward, it will be a, a very, very benign interest rate climate, which will encourage the investments quite a lot. Uh, we have seen that even in the year, year which has just gone by, calendar year which has just gone by, there was a whole lot of positivity in terms of the way people were looking at the investment opportunities. I hope in the current year, those that kind of a positivity will get converted into actual investments on ground and we are expecting that in the in the financial year 22 23 we will have a growth rate of somewhere in the very close range of seven percent and as for the world estimates also on a higher base the growth is expected indian economy is expected to grow at around six and a half percent so that i believe is very very encouraging and we are moving towards our ambition in terms of taking this economy to the level of 5 trillion very soon. Considering that the budget is just about to come up, um, there is a hope that the government is going to push up spending. Uh, in terms of your view of the economy, uh, the state uh, that we're in right now, considering the f also the fact that you have uh, significantly higher oil prices, commodity prices than you had uh, in the last few years, uh, keeping all of this in mind, is there room for that kind of spending to come in still? Uh, do you believe that that the economy um, can or the government can sort of finance that? I think uh, the infrastructure will continue to be the focus. How it will get funded is something which perhaps we'll get to know once the budget is announced. But nevertheless, we have seen for past couple of years, infrastructure has been a clear focus for the government. And I think uh, the kind of steps which have been taken and also the progress in terms of the National Infrastructure Pipeline, the PM Gati Shakti program. So these are the kind of initiatives which are expected to go on for a reasonable time. And uh, with that in mind, my expectation would be that uh, there will be a reasonable allocation for these programs. And at the same time, I expect that even from the private sector as well, there would be decent investment flowing in uh, in terms of investment. I think when it comes to infrastructure, some of the self-revenue generating projects will perhaps move towards uh, REITs and in bit kind of structures and which will also unlock part of the capital which can be deployed into taking up of the new infrastructure projects. So we have seen that in bits have become fairly popular in the economy. And uh, with more and more self-revenue generating projects coming into circulation, 
perhaps it will gain even further currency. So that is a way forward in terms of supporting the infrastructure investment in the economy. Okay. Uh, coming to banks now, considering the show is called Bankable. So the, the whole idea here is that infrastructure growth is coming back. You can see it in the regulators uh, monthly figures, uh, you know, wholesale lending is stepping up banks. Uh, in fact, it's getting closer to where uh, retail lending is happening, even though it's just a smaller base. To you, to your mind, what is the best space to be in? I'm not talking about SBI strategy. I'm talking about you as a banker. Infrastructure is some, some place where the government is spending money on. So obviously there, there is going to be demand from there. But where, as, where should bankers focus on? What, is the, what, what are the kind of borrowers that you think should deserve credit? See, we have seen in the past also for the developing economies, particularly for the infrastructure sector, bank lending is perhaps one of the most important source. Yeah. And more so when the debt, debt capital market is, is not as strong in the economy. Yeah. Perhaps that will remain one of the focus area for uh, any of the bank. Apart from that, you know, various other areas which are also showing a lot of uh, appetite for credit. One among them is uh, the NBFCs. Secondly, we are also observing good opportunities in the renewable sector. Mm. And uh, similarly, when it comes to core sectors, there also there is a decent opportunity which is emerging. Logistics is becoming another very important area when it comes to warehousing, when it comes to even for the, uh, when it comes to, you know, uh, the data warehousing, etc. That also is assuming even greater significance in the economy with more and more digitization coming in. This is going to be a reality. This is a new sector which is emerging as compared to the traditional sectors where we have seen there's a decent trend, more capacity augmentation, core sectors like cement, steel, there also we are seeing decent trends emerging. So I would say that it is, it is quite a broad based uh, demand which we get to see on ground uh, and I hope it will sustain in the days to come. What are some of the lessons that you as a banker are taking from the previous lending cycle, which did not really turn out that well for the entire system. Just uh, top two or three things that you think you should keep in mind. Yeah, yeah in the past, uh, the last infrastructure cycle, we observed that one, there was not adequate appreciation of the risk which were inherent into the infrastructure sector. The learnings from the past exercises that uh, those um, experiences have been very well enshrined into our risk management policies. Secondly, at that was a stage when perhaps the quality of equity which was pumped into the infrastructure sector was more synthetic than as compared to organic. So that is the other area where I feel that uh, the bankers are, are quite cognizant. And the third and the most important is that uh, during those days there was no insolvency law in place and losing a uh, ownership of an enterprise was more fiction. Yeah. Now, thanks to IBC and the ecosystem which has got created, uh, it is now a reality. So I think to that extent, we get to see even more responsible borrowing on the part of the corporates too. When you mentioned synthetic equity, now how has that uh, gotten tackled? I mean, from the banker's point of view, what are you looking for? What are signs looking for? No, we are looking for the quality of the equity. We are looking what is the source of the equity. And it should not be at a whole core level, some debt which has been raised, which has been converted into equity. So we are very mindful in terms of it should, equity should be a genuine equity. So that is something which ensures that actually equity is nothing but a risk bearing capital. So to that extent, uh, we have to have the, I mean, quality of equity has to be strong so that it can actually take the risk. You, uh, at the beginning of this interview, said that uh, for 2023, you're very hopeful that this is going to be a very good year because you've, you've come out of the, uh, the stressful times. Now is the time to actually grow. Uh, but what are some of the challenges that you are looking out for uh, that you think if we take care of this, it's all smooth sailing? Uh, well, of course, uh, one of the challenge which uh, many of us perceived in the, in the current financial year was essentially on account of the credit growth being at a much faster pace as compared to the deposit growth. Yeah. But uh, I would say that uh, to my mind it is more temporary in nature because 
uh, when we look at the credit base is quite uh, the I mean, deposit base is actually quite high as compared to the credit base. So naturally, even if a higher percentage term does not really mean that it is becoming a huge risk. So I think uh, going forward, I expect that one of course, the uh, the growth of the credit growth perhaps will rationalize on a higher base. So to that extent, perhaps it would not be as much of a challenge, liquidity should not be a challenge. Mm. And uh, there should be ample liquidity which should be there in the system to support the credit growth going forward. Though it will, it will come down, credit growth perhaps may not be as high as about 20, 21 percent which we saw in the last quarter. We expect that it should be somewhere around 14 to 16 percent. And with that kind of a growth and the kind of deposit growth which is happening around 10 percent plus. So I think it will eventually bring in the balance. So that was the only challenge which I would see. It was somewhere looming large, but I think hopefully we should be out of that challenge as a system, not as a bank. But yes, but it, it, it might be true for for uh, you know banks of your size or or probably some of your sm uh, smaller uh, private sector peers who are still very big in, in a, at a system level. But there's a bunch of mid-sized and smaller uh, private and public sector banks uh, who are teetering at that one is to one credit deposit ratio. Uh, do you think that this this gap between the growth rates is is okay for them considering uh, that there is liquidity available in the rest of the system? So actually once uh, you know much of it will depend upon the ability of these banks to raise the deposits. Uh, de raising of deposit is one part and the, the price at which they are raising the deposit is very important component because eventually if at all their average cost of raising resources goes up, so naturally that th those resources can be lent only into very risky ventures, which again means that there can be uh, inherent risk in the system. Yeah. So I think uh, one has to strike a balance, so that is the reality. And uh, for the smaller and the mid-sized bank, perhaps they will have to find a niche there they would like to operate, both in terms of the deposit market as well as in terms of the loan market. Is it still the, the places where you are not able to reach as effectively or you as in sense a larger lender is not able to reach effectively? Maybe that is a space for these uh, lenders to operate in. Uh, but many of these lenders are not present in those locations because we are actually present for instance a bank like us we are with more than 22,300 branches. Uh, they are, we are present across the nook and corner of the country. So I think it is not the geographical area, but perhaps the activity wise they will have to find an issue area. Understood. Uh, you have also uh, gone out, State Bank of India has gone out and tried to capture the startup uh, market with your startup branches. Uh, I would just want to get some sense of uh, what is what is that piece of business looking like for you and is it something that is going to become so big that you want to have uh, as much uh, manpower there? No, actually, uh, you know, we, when we look at this particular space, there was a point of time when the Honorable Prime Minister has talked about the Startup India, Stand Up India and uh, uh, also we have gone for the, the Jandhan which are the Digital India. So I think uh, we very firmly believe in, in his conviction for a country like us which has got ample talent which may not have as much of capital, but it has got ample talent. Mm. So that talent can be channelized for problem solving. And actually, I, the way I look at it is I compare it with somewhere in the way, way back in the year 2000, when the Y2K movement came in, yeah. Y2K event came in. Yeah. It was actually the Indians, uh, Indian IT industry which has gone around the globe and had solved the problem relating to Y2K. And that is something which brought India IT on the global scene. So perhaps uh, with 100, 708 unicorn which have already happened in this country, I feel that this is the, this is the third largest ecosystem on the startup and uh, we can actually make a mark. And uh, the way I look at it is that we as a financial sector group, we have got all the products and services which are consumed by the startups. The only thing was that these were being offered by bank and our various other subsidiary companies. So now with the help of these branches, we are trying to demonstrate the power of one. 
it's eventually the state bank group which will offer all the products and solutions and the services which are consumed by startups and it will make their life easier so with that in mind we have started setting up these branches the first one we had set up in bangalore the second one which we set up just in the last uh, on this friday itself uh, it was actually in iit madras research park so um, we get to see that there is lot of encouragement for these branches and hopefully we will be in a position to create value for the startups and perhaps will be in a position to contribute for generating many more unicorns in the days to come the funding winter uh, con- conversation that doesn't uh, that doesn't bother you as much uh, see actually when it comes to startup it is not really funding in the very initial stages in the initial stages they need to raise capital in series a b c and for that we have got investment bank they when that capital comes in they need the custodial services they need the forex services forex services we can offer from our bank custodial services we can offer through our sba sg global securities and when that kind of money comes in they need to deploy that in a most optimal manner we have got the sba mutual fund available which can actually guide them for investing that money so uh, i would say that uh, the unicorns perhaps would be in need of receivable financing which we can offer when it comes to uh, the one which are in series a b c they would per- perhaps we extended the cgtmsc guaranteed or the dip uh, dipp has also come in with a guarantee program even that kind of loans can be considered depending upon the model and also their cash flows so i think uh, there is a, f- a fairly decent ecosystem which is available today uh, which will help us in in in, in supporting the startups and making their life easier i want to come to the last couple of questions uh, uh during this conversation uh firstly uh, under your uh, tenure uh, you you really focus on two very key aspects there's, there's a strong home loan portfolio that has grown leaps and bounds uh then you also really focus on the unsecured portfolio which for state bank of india was not it was not the biggest business but now it's become a significant part of your retail uh, franchise uh i want to understand from you the the interplay between the chasing a strong home loan book but then also keeping that high margin unsecured business growing uh, how do you look at it risk wise how do you look at it as a as a business piece yeah sure thank you very much this is something very often i say that our unsecured book is better than the secured book <laughs> and why i say so is because when we look at a gross np in unsecured book it is actually around somewhere around less than in many cases it is actually less than 0.50 that is the gnp yeah. and uh, essentially it is attributed to the fact that uh, the customer selection which we do is something where lies the key of success and uh, we have strengthened our underwriting practices quite a lot we are leveraging analytics to ensure that uh, we identify the right set of customers we have got uh, uh, now the uh, state of the art correction center also so uh, call center which is actually which is helping us in reaching out to the customers in time if we have started uh, calling for the pre delinquency calls we have started offering these kind of loans with the help of our digital tools just for four clicks and the pre approved personal loans are made available so similarly we have recently also we have gone ahead and now we are building up a book in the pre approved business loan also so that is i think we have got encouraged by all this and that is something which is helping us in really ensuring that we deliver to the customer in the nick of time yeah. and when they actually need the money so i think uh, to that extent uh, this book has delivered well in terms of the uh, size we have actually about we have, we have crossed the number of 5 trillion on the personal loans and when it comes to home loan mortgage loan we have crossed 6.1 trillion already mm-hmm. and uh, interestingly you know 72% of our home loan borrowers are in the age group of about 30 to 50 years of age right. and 11% of the borrowers are less than 30 years of age okay. so younger people are buying houses so younger <laughs> people are buying houses that's actually a very encouraging sign and uh, the average duration of the home loan is just for 12 years 
So I think considering the, the way we have looked at it is that uh, there is going to be a replacement market too in this particular space and uh, it's a very, very promising customer segment whom we get a chance to serve mm -hmm. and we are seeing that over the years our average ticket size is also growing up now. So which means that we are becoming relevant for the bigger ticket housing loan customers as well. So I think these are very encouraging signs in terms of it gives us the confidence that going forward uh, we can continue to serve this set of customers and maybe we can even improve our services and can rope in many more. Fair enough sir. I want to wrap this up with, with one key question around the purpose of the banking system. Now by all means last six months of 2022 and even now as 2023 is just beginning, uh, this has been the time for public sector banks to come back uh, with full force. You know, you taking care of your stress asset problem capital adequacy is pretty strong in most lenders the people actually are out of that pca framework which had blocked lending for some of these guys uh, how long how sustainable uh, is this return because all of it was obviously happening on a smaller base for a lot of policy sector banks but uh, how how long do you think this can go on before your private sector peers say okay no we are going to come after you now See, the point is that uh, more important aspect is that when it comes to any organization, unless and until they invest well in terms of the structure, they invest well in terms of processes, they would not be in a position to visualize the stress and the risk which is there in the system. I think for banking as an activity, risk is a reality. The more important thing is that we should be in a position to identify the risk in time and we should be in a position to mitigate that risk in time. So I think the past learnings which are there with the public sector banks, the, to, to my mind they have honed up their skills in terms of risk identification and risk mitigation and also they have got adequate capital and also the past losses they have already cleaned off from the balance sheets. So that gives them the required muscle. So, if I may say that uh, if at all this was a destination, perhaps no, it's a journey. All of us need to keep on upgrading ourselves and see to it that we are ahead of the curve. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Khan, for joining us on this conversation. Thank you. Thank you.